The new Giant Tree of Life poster featuring every new Gala Pokemon is available now. Pick one up before Christmas as a gift to yourself or to a friend by using the link in the description and thank you for supporting the channel, as well as those of you supporting on Patreon, such as the Nerd Therapist. Thank you. Hello Pokemon Master, my name is Bertie Potobi and thank you for clicking on this video. Thank you for supporting the channel. As many of you did watching this video, the top 10 hidden secrets and references Easter eggs in the world of Pokemon Sword and Shield. I actually had a longer list and I had to cut a few of my little hidden Easter eggs and secrets out to make, make it a top 10 because, you know, top 10 just sounds nicer. And since making that video, I've come up with more and because so many of you seem to enjoy it, you watch that video, it got a lot of views, which, you know, helps here on YouTube. Thank you so much. I decided, yeah, why not? Let's give 10 more points and none of these are what I would consider filler. They're all very, you know, unique points that I, I find particularly interesting in the world of Pokemon Sword and Shield. Of course, I will be on the lookout for more, so let me know in the comments. If you've seen anything in the world of Sword and Shield that I should absolutely be covering. And something else that helps out massively here in the world of YouTube is the fact that this video has been sponsored by Arc Age Unchained. Arc Age Unchained is an MMORPG with its own beautiful looking world. They've recently had a massive graphics update, so it's looking bigger and better than ever. And there's so many different ways that you can build your character. Two different sort of factions that you can align with six different races, and then each of those have six different classes they can be. And on top of that, you can build your character in the uh, in the way that you want. I'm still pretty new to the world of MMOs, so I chose a character that I felt resonated with me, a stubby little dwarf dude. And the first thing I did was just run around and enjoy what the world looks like as my little dwarf dude with his little stubby legs and he's got this ability to sprint. Just running really fast across the map, chasing after other players, because of course it is an MMO. Which means there's other people populating this world. As well as that, there's a ton of fantastic weapons and armors that you can get. You can customize your character as you level up. And as well as these new unique relics and items that you can get, including gliders, there's also mounts, there's special creatures that you can find in the world. So if Arcade Unchained sounds like it's for you, please Please click the link at the top of the description to check it out. You can of course check it out now by going to Glyph, that is the website and the client. You just click the link at the top of the description. And thank you to Arcade Unchained for sponsoring today's video. Right, let's get on with the 10 more hidden secrets and easter eggs in the world of Pokemon Sword and Shield. Okay, so number one, the first kind of missable detail that I I've come across. This one is very much theory bait and I will be doing a Pokemon theory all about this. Have you ever wondered why the statue in Stow on Tide, I believe it is the place, I keep on wanting to say Stoke on Trent because that's a real place in the UK and all the names are very very similar but still on tide there is the statue of Zacian, Zamazenta and the two kings and it seems to have been buried away behind this wall so no one would find it on top of that in the city of Surchester there is the banner the the hidden part of the history of Gala which also shows the two heroes and you might be wondering why are these two parts of Gala's history being hidden from the world what is it that they have in common well, you might notice that they both have uh, imagery of the shrine. The shrine that is found in Slumbering Weld, where the rusted sword and old shield can be found. The shrine where ultimately you encounter Zacian and Zamazenta. So it seems to be the case, the thing the story is implying, the subtext that's going on there, is that maybe in order to keep these Pokemon a secret, or in, in order to hide the true nature of what happened on the darkest day, the reason it's all being hidden is because of the imagery of that shrine. Okay, number two. That one wasn't so much an Easter egg so much as it's just a missile detail. You want an easter egg? I'll give you one. In the city of Spikemouth, there are lots of posters lining the walls of the city, but one in particular is of a lady wearing a green bikini with green hair. And this is a reference to the original swimmer class from Gold, Silver, and Crystal. Well, yeah, that was the design of the character. It's a pretty old kind of like little easter egg, but I really appreciate it. So, number three, I believe it's, it's either in Surchester or Motorstoke, but I'm gonna say Motorstoke. In the upstairs of the hotel, you can enter a room and find a little very interesting cutscene in which, Cluedo style, there is a character who has lined up a number of other NPCs. This character declares that there has been a crime. A murder. Okay, not a murder, but he believes his berry has been stolen, eaten even. And there is this whole kind of very, very Cluedo-esque Sherlock Holmes style deduction where he works out who exactly it was that ate his berry. This might be a reference to Sherlock Holmes, but even as if it isn't, there's another reference. It's kind of a, a part B to this one, that in the town of Hillbury, there is someone who mentions that there was a Pokemon who was a great detective, which of course is a reference to Detective Pikachu, who is in himself a reference to Sherlock Holmes. Mm, see by the, the little hat. 
So there you go, double whammy, we still get our, our Sherlock Holmes reference in Pokemon Sword and Shield. Next up, number four, another one of those kind of missable detail type deals. Did you know that Pokemon can now evolve at level 100? Throughout the whole franchise, if you get your Magikarp to level 100, you're not evolving it into a Gyarados, which honestly, I think is kind of funny. But now the item, the rare candy, has a secondary effect. If the Pokemon is level 100, it won't go to level 101, obviously, but it will now evolve an unevolved Pokemon, which, again, pretty cool. Number five, let's talk about shirts. And actually, before I get a little bit further into this one, I made a mistake in my last video. The last top 10 hidden secrets, Easter eggs, references, missable details, that video, I mentioned that in the town of Sir Chester, there were two shirts, a, an Eevee one and a Pikachu one, and they were named incorrectly. But I was wrong about that, because if you actually buy the shirt and wear it, turns out the other Pokemon is on the back of the shirt. So I was wrong about that. However, here's one for you. There is a shirt that never made it into the game. There was a competition held by the Pokemon company for graphic designers, graphic artists to submit their designs to be on a shirt on a bit of apparel in Pokemon Sword and Shield, and they'd win some money. This really cool Gyarados slash Magikarp design was submitted. Uh, I don't know the artist right now. One moment. No, I can't find the name, but this design is really cool. So why didn't it get into the game? Well, it turns out it was against competition rules to submit a design that you had already used elsewhere online. It was a self-plagiarism situation and the person who won the competition, their design had already been online. It had been out there. They had already posted it elsewhere. So they lost the prize and ultimately their shirt wasn't put into the game. Okay, number six. Did you know that Chairman Rose, his origins are not as a business tycoon, but actually as a construction worker, as a miner, he came up through the very workforce of Gala. This can be seen in two different situations. Number one, after you complete the game, if you visit a Elena, who's in one of the mines of Gala. Not sure why she's there. Or Eliana. I don't always pronounce her name very well. Anyway, she gives you Chairman Rose's card and she says that Chairman Rose, yeah, he used to be a construction worker. Or I keep on saying construction worker. He used to be a miner. He used to be part of Gala's workforce before he was kind of, you know, the big business tycoon. But this can also be seen because in Hillbury, you see one of these characters, one of these miners. And they have the Pokemon Kufan, which is a Steel-type Pokemon. There's a lot of Steel-type Pokemon are found in the mines, but specifically Kufan and its evolution. Copperaja, this is the signature Pokemon of Chairman Rose. I can't help but feel like Chairman Rose is supposed to be the in-game like uh, equivalent, like they've, they've creatively taken Lord Alan Sugar, who's kind of our guy who runs The Apprentice. I can't help but feel like this is basically supposed to be a younger Lord Alan Sugar. Kind of business tycoon of the Gala region. Making smart investments, hiring people, firing people. I don't know. I just feel like that might also be a little reference, but not so sure about that. Number seven. There is a room that you cannot enter. They do this with every single Pokemon game. Okay, right. Back... Back in Generation 6, one of the big things about Kalos, one of the big missed opportunities, was the power plant that you couldn't enter. Then, in Generation 7, in Alola, there was another power plant that, again, you couldn't reach, you couldn't get to. You could take a little photo of it through your uh, Porygon, your, not your Porygon, that's Pokemon Masters, through your Porygon Snap, Pokemon Snap. Oh, they've got so many different names. I love Pokemon, but even I can't keep up with all of these different things. The Rotom Dex, the Rotom Dex! It's at the electrical power plant, you can't get in. And once again, it's even part of the story. Here in the Gala region, you see Olivia on the route left of Motorstoke, and there is a power plant in the distance which you cannot access, you cannot get to. And that's not the only room in the game you cannot enter. When you are in the final part of the game and you are in the Pokemon League, there is a room in the kind of holding area, in the waiting area before matches, that says the guy who's in the way, he's a Macrocosmos member, and he says the only uh, author personnel can enter, which obviously you're not. Okay, great. I'll beat the league and I'll come back here and then I'll be able to enter. No, you never enter this room ever again, even in the rematches. You have no way to find out what is in that room. Pokemon, why are you teasing me like this? Okay, next up on this list, we have the fact that Sonya is an amazing artist. Her art, well, it can be seen when she's a Pokemon professor in the lab, but it can also be seen in her room. She's done sketches of a num number of Pokemon. I wonder if she'd get on with Tracy Sketchit. Anyway, the thing is, with all the Pokemon she's drawn, they're all from the Galar region, apart from one. In her room, there's a Zubat drawing. We have seen Pokemon from other regions that aren't in this deck. For example, there's a Poliwag shirt. But Poliwag and Zubat, 
there's a couple Pokemon that aren't in these games that are kind of referenced in these games, meaning the world is still, you know, those Pokemon still exist out there. However, maybe it means that Sonya has traveled to some of the regions where you can find Zubat to sketch it. Maybe the next region we'll visit, there'll be a cameo by Sonya. I wonder what regions have Zubat. Sinnoh? Two more to go. This one is kind of more of a missable thing. It's a little hidden detail. There is a young girl in the town of Hillbury who will give you this whole coded message about where there is a secret hidden treasure. Personally, when I played through the game, I found this really difficult to work out what she was saying. But what she says is that you have to go and investigate the runes that are around the city in a specific order. And that specific order is grass, water, and then fire. I didn't totally relook that up between cuts. But yeah, you do grass, water, and fire, you speak on that, you communicate with the runes in that order, and then you find it's sadly just an expert belt. I was kind of hoping it would be something more mysterious. And final note, and again, this is Pokemon Theory Bait, final hidden reference Easter egg thing that you might not have realized. Opal's Lee card says that she took over the gym from her mother 70 years ago. Now this means one of two things. Either the Galar Region's gym challenge is the oldest one that we know about in the Pokemon world, or the Gala games are set in the future. This is because the modern day Pokeball is only 40 to 50 years old in terms of like Kerr creating the modern Pokeball that is then sold by Silphco, or even Professor Oak, who is in the manga lore, said to be the person who set up the first Pokemon League and was the first champion. He's not older than 70. And as impressive as Professor Oak is, he didn't do it when he was one. That means that either the Pokemon League in Gala has been going on for a lot longer, or the Gala games are set far in the future. I'm gonna be thinking about that one a lot in terms of Pokemon theories. But anyway, these are just my 10 hidden Easter eggs, reference, missable secrets, that kind of thing. Uh, if there is anything else I have missed between this video and the last video, we're 20 down, let me know. Maybe I'll do another one of these. Thank you so much to Arcage Unchained for sponsoring this video please do click the link at the top of the description and head on over to Glyph and check it out. And of course, so hi, Pokemon Masters. This is Ash Ketchum. You just watched a video by Bird Keeper Toby. That makes you a Pokemon Master.